Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And uh, I've got some cool stuff today. Got an envelope from Italy with some really sweet looking lands. Well, they're probably pretty beat up, but they're really sweet lands. And I can't wait to play them in my deck, Timmy's Spellbook. Now, I also got a really nice letter, and I actually would like to start with that. Um, and that has something to do with this card, An Hava In. It's a sorcery from Homelands. Two green and one to cast. And uh, it reads, gain one plus a life where the asterisk is equal to the total number of green creatures you have in play. So I know what you're thinking. It's a pretty bad card. It's Homelands. Why is he showing that to us? Well, I'm showing it to you because of this letter. I got a really nice uh, letter. Let's just have a look at it, shall we? Hello, Thomas. Thank you for being such an inspiration in old school MTG. Yeah, this is good for my ego. Uh, it's not all about the power, and you are absolutely right, uh, Richard. That's the person who wrote this letter. It is not all about the power. Love seeing and playing against your Bruce. Here is my inspiration for the upcoming tournament. Hope we'll meet on in a proper inn in the future for beer and games. And then that um, letter kind of came with this card with it. So it was like fold it. And I opened it up, and there it was. And, of course, it was in an envelope, but I didn't have the patience, so I already ripped it open, but I still wanted to share this letter with you. Um, it's, it's, you know, lockdown has been pretty bad um, here in the Netherlands and here in Amsterdam. We've got a curfew. Uh, you have to be inside at 9. Everything's closed, like in a lot of other places in the world. And, you know, we're fortunate enough to still be able to play Magic the Gathering online, but something I've, I've started to do as well is make a lot of trades uh, online. So just uh, ask people if they want to trade, and Richard is one of those people. I was able to trade some some of the dark cards for some revised cards, and of course I'm really happy with them. I'll just quickly show them to you. This is the Veteran Bodyguard, two white and three to cast for, oh, now you've already seen the other one, for a two five card, and there's a lot of text, but. Basically what it does is when your opponent attacks with the creature and you don't block it, the damage done by the creature is dealt to veteran bodyguard instead. So as you can see, it's got um, five defense, five toughness. So usually I combine this or, well, I actually <laughs> don't play this very often, but I should rephrase, it used to be combined with a card called castle and enchantment that would give plus O plus two. And then you would have a really beefed up veteran bodyguard. You can already see he's pretty beefed up. Um, he always reminds me of Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse. Don't know if you know the movie, uh, but that's what he reminds me of. And yeah, the Veteran Bodyguard. Pretty iconic card and actually used to be pretty decent back in the day, but now it's not played anymore. And I really understand why. The problem is it only soaks up combat damage, you know, so damage dealt by creatures in combat. It doesn't soak up... Uh, you know, fireball or any other types of damage. So that, that would have made it a lot better. If it would just soak up all the damage, that would have been great. So we've got Veteran Bodyguard that I traded and also a Dark Pact, one of my favorite pieces of art. And this is by Quentin Hoover. Yeah, it has to be really nice. And especially the Summer Edition is just stunning. It got the colors are just so vivid on the Summer Edition one. This is actually a card that's created for Anti, so it doesn't see any play at all at the moment. Three black to cast a sorcery and swap the top card of your library with either card of the Anti. This swap is permanent. You must have a card in your library to cast a spell. Remove this card from your deck before playing if you're not playing for Anti. Wouldn't it be cool if you're playing for Anti? You're almost dead. You've got no cards left in your library and you would be able to play this, right? I mean, unfortunately it doesn't work. Like you must have a card in your library, but if it would work, that would be pretty sweet. So we've got Dark Pact and we've got Contract from Below. Again, it's an anti-card. Um, according to some, the best card in Magic, if it would still be allowed to play. One black or sorcery, discard your hand um, and draw eight new cards. So not seven, eight new cards. <laughs> and then adding the first drawn to your ante. Okay, so I guess you're drawing seven. One, the first one is uh, going to your ante. Remove this card from your deck before playing if you're not playing for ante. Right, so again, this is an ante card, but in really, really, really pristine condition. Really happy with it. Look at that condition. 
Just beautiful, gorgeous. And then we've got the Jade Monolith. Now this is quite an exceptional card for to cast. Again, one of those cards you hardly ever see. It's an artifact that you can pay one. You may take damage done to any creature on yourself instead, but you must take all of it. Source of damage is unchanged, right? So this is kind of a card that can keep your creatures alive. I've, I've seen it um, in kind of like a draft sealed environment and it actually was pretty good in that environment. But I think in constructed in Swedish, there's a reason you don't see it a lot. Although I still think, you know, it's a card with, with, um, with some weird, weird potential. Art by Ansematics, really love the sky here. And I think I got a couple. Yeah, I think I got a couple, two of these. I believe I'm not complete in my play set. So thank you very much, Richard. And also two Onulets, originally a card from the Antiquities 3 to cast for a 2-2 artifact creature. And if Onulet is placed in the graveyard, its controller gains two life. And if you've read the book, The Brothers War, these Onulets actually play uh, a little, little role in them. It's pretty cool at the start of the book. Um, so thank you, Richard, for bringing me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps closer on my quest to completing Revised Times 4. And now for the post from Italy. I am really looking forward to this. It's always nice kind of to slowly work on a deck. Can you imagine, this is actually pretty, the cards inside here have been, you know, pretty expensive. Look at the packing. <laughs> Look at that. We can get dishwasher tablets on sale in Italy. Nice. Well, let's hope the contents is safe. At least it was sent in a bubble envelope, so that's something. I actually don't have scissors with me, so I'm just gonna use this knife to, yeah. Cut the sellotape. And there we go. Maybe I'm mistaken. Maybe this is another order, but I thought this was, or this is actually my, my lance, but I, I could be wrong. So this is, pro yeah, this is just to protect it, right? We got some new cards. 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 Um, and then here we go, flipping it around. Yep. These were the ones. Just gonna take this away, take this off. Look at that. It's a beta island and it's signed. So I've got a couple that are signed like this with the, the fat marker, or fat felt tip, I guess, uh, by Mark Poole. So what I like, and I don't know what's your opinion, but when it comes to autographs, I kind of like it when they, let's just get these out, out of the sleeves. Um, when they all have the same, oh, it's a sleeve from the side. Okay, that explains. When they all have the same type of autograph. So I already have a couple with this. So I'm going for for those um, basic islands that have this autograph. So another one and another one. So still there are a few places where you can still pick these up and I'm gonna play them in Timmy's Spellbook. I kind of like it. So here, you see them all together. So this is it. This is the mail day of today. And I think it's pretty cool that it's sent in this. I mean, I, I understand uh, that top loaders, maybe they're hard to get now in Italy. I don't know. I've seen they're, they're actually also pretty expensive now. I mean, everything is just expensive these days. Um, but these cards are also, you know, not cheap. So I really expected a top loader here, but hey, they look good. They're safe. They're actually in, in a better condition than I thought they would. Yes, they are dinged up. They're definitely not, um, you know, in excellent condition. I kind of, but I bought them in poor condition. And I think for poor condition lands, they look really, really, really good. So people often complain about the grading in certain areas of Europe, but I think the grading, if, if you know what to expect, the grading is fine. You know, that's important that you know what to expect. So really happy with these lands, really happy with uh, Richard's letter, and of course with his revised cards as well. As well. And also really happy uh, with you, the viewer, for watching another episode here on Timmy Talks. 
the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you want to support the channel, if you want to help me continue making content, old school content like this and airing all the games, um, you can do that very simply by leaving a like, leaving a comment, subscribing to the channel if you're not a subscriber yet. And you can also become a patron of the channel. And when you become a patron, you can actually join me in these crazy tournaments. So every, I don't know, month or so, or, or two months or three months, I don't do it that often, but I, I organize uh, a tournament every once in a while. This time we're gonna play with Homelands, Fallen Empires, and the Dark Constructed. Uh, that's a tournament. So if you like these type of tournaments and you would like to join them, um, check out my Patreon page and find out how you actually can. Um, that's it for today. Talking about patrons, let's go to the end scroller. Let's take a look at our fantastic, amazing, super patrons and channel members of Timmy Talk. Let's go. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ich kann das Fink, das Sommer kann sehen.